Marriage and missions. In this series, we're going to talk with families about how they use the influence of their marriage to support the missions efforts of their local church. That's up next on this episode of the Healing Place Marriage and Family Podcast. Welcome to the Healing Place Marriage and Family Podcast, where families are equipped to reflect God's redeeming love. And now, here's your host, Jared Lambert. Welcome once again to the Healing Place Marriage and Family Podcast, where families are equipped to reflect God's redeeming love. I'm your host, Jared Lambert. Thank you so much for joining us, downloading this episode and checking us out. On this episode, we have joining us Tyler and Crystal Tullis. Guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. How are you guys doing? We're yeah. so good to glad to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, doing great, man. It's great to, great to hear great to hear a Cajun voice. It's been a, it's been a couple of days since I heard a good Cajun voice, Jared. Good hearing from you guys. Can't wait to catch up and hear more about your story. So like we talked about in the intro, we're talking about marriage and missions. And about seven years ago, you guys answered the call uh, that God had on your lives for this season. So we want to go ahead and talk about that. But before we get into that, why don't you introduce the Tullis family to our listeners? Yeah, so uh, I'm Tyler. Uh, I'm originally uh, born and raised in Baton Rouge. And so I'm a, I'm a Louisiana boy like you, Jared. My accent has, has, has faded a little bit, though, and I'm not, I'm not saying I'm proud of that, but um, I am from Baton Rouge originally. Uh, Crystal is here. Hey there. With me. She's my wife. We uh, were married 14 years in December. We made 14 years of marriage. Um, she's from West Texas, so married a Texas girl, and uh, she ended up in Louisiana uh, with me from West Texas. Let's West, make that clear. Oh yeah. West Texas, West Texas. God's country. And, uh, we, we, we were married in Louisiana, uh, spent the first eight ish years of our marriage there. Um, and then, uh, we moved up to, to Boston, Massachusetts and planted a church here called Story Heights. And, um, we brought two, two Bayou babies with us from Louisiana. Uh, that's Whitaker who turns 11 this month and Campbell, who just turned nine, and then uh, since moving to Boston, we added two Boston babies, and uh, we have a Peter Bo, uh, who is six years old, and just so everyone is clear, it's B E A U X because I am I am from the Bayou, and, and we keep it real still. So got, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we got Peter Bo, and then um, and then we finally got my girl. Yeah, we added the added the boss at the end, the boss baby, Bennett Claire. Uh, is our, <laughs> our three-year-old princess, and she's yeah. uh, calling the shots. But that's a um, a brief overview of the Tullus clan, living life and loving loving most all of it. Come on, man. I hear you. I hear you. Hey, uh, so you said you guys started out uh, – in, in started ministry in Baton Rouge. So you got t- tell us how you guys are connected with Healing Place. Yeah. So um, when I graduated, well, actually I was a senior in high school. I went to Parkview uh, and when I was a senior in high school. There was a, a cute girl in my school that invited me to go to church with her at, um, at the church that was down the street from my church. And so um, I didn't know much about the church, but I thought the girl was cute. So I decided I'd I'd tag along and see um, see what it was all about, and uh, turns out it was well, it was Trinity Christian Center, and now is you know Healing Place Church. And um, as 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 it happens, uh, the girl didn't didn't make the cut, uh, but the church stuck, and so I started uh, attending Healing Place uh, as a senior in high school and started volunteering with the youth ministry. And uh, it was the same year that they started the junior high youth ministry. This was a long time ago. And um, started helping out with that as a volunteer. And uh, as time went on, uh, there was an opportunity for me to uh, to come on staff at Healing Place and um, working with the children's ministry and the youth ministry. And um, at the same time, Crystal was moving to Baton Rouge and we were married and she um, worked in the sports ministry. Come on, man. Basketball coach Crystal. And, um, and upwards. That's where I met you and <coughs> you and Brandy, Jared. That's right. Yeah. We used to uh, referee games together. I remember yes, that. That's right. <laughs> it sure is. And so we, um, were, were married and, uh, right after we got married, we were asked to be the junior high youth pastors. 
And uh, we said yes without knowing what we were doing or what we were getting ourselves into. And uh, that began an incredible eight-year adventure of, uh, of ministry and pastoring uh, junior high youth and just youth in general uh, from a fantastic church that is our home church. It's our home base uh, as far as church goes. And uh, Pastor Mike and Rachel are, are our pastors, and we're very, very glad to be able to say that. And they, um, and uh, Healing Place is the church that sent us out uh, to come and, and do what was in our heart to do in planting Story Heights Church um, to uh, connect people's story to God's story here in Boston, uh, because we believe that God is is who takes people's stories to new heights. And that's the, that's the big idea behind that, but, but basically everything we do and uh, everything that, at least the foundation of everything we do, comes right out of uh, 19202 Highland Road, and uh, we're very grateful for that. Awesome, yeah, love love y'all story. Love been keeping up uh, with what's going over there in Story Heights from afar on social media. Uh, excited for what God's doing over there. So, you know, you talked about how um, you wanted to connect uh, people's story to God's story. That's right. So let's talk about how let's talk about your salvation testimony. How how, how was your story connected to God's story personally for, for both of you guys? Well, I'll start on this one. Um, I was raised a uh, church, good old Church of Christ, like, oh, you know, God. sing a cappella every Sunday. Uh, the, the wooden pews, uh, hellfire and brimstone from the from the pulpit. And I loved church. I loved going to church. My, my grandma actually tells the story that um, I would always line up my cousins. I'm the oldest. I'd line them up on after church on Sunday uh, on the balcony steps. And I would I would preach my own sermons. And I would go get grape juice and crackers out of the pantry and serve communion to all my oh. <clears throat> to all my, my, my cousins and my siblings. And so I think it was just kind of in me uh, at a real young age that that was kind of the, the story that was going to be my story. Um, so really was just kind of raised in church and then, um, started going to non-denominational churches, uh, when I was in, uh, a kind of a junior or senior in high school. And then, uh, went to, when I met Tyler was really kind of the defining moment for me. I always loved God, but I think it, what would, what would kind of be the definition of my story back then as I was real religious, I, I knew, well, I thought I knew all of the answers to everything, I uh, could quote scripture back and forth, but I really had so much to learn about the heart of God, about the things of the Holy Spirit, about the local church, uh, how it's the bride of Christ. I had no idea about any of that. And um, and when I met Tyler, we actually met on the phone. I was going to school at Abilene Christian University, and his friend roomed across the hall from me, and he called her one day, and that's how we met. And Tyler had just actually... Really, I think he, he mm -hmm. can tell you a little bit more about this, but he really had his moment with Christ and was filled with the Holy Spirit um, at the youth camp that Healing Place was putting on in, was it Ruston, Louisiana? Yeah. Louisiana Tech, Crosswalk Youth Camp. <laughs> Crosswalk, back in the day. And um, and so when I met Tyler, he was really unlike any guy I had ever known before. I, I had known good like church boys, like good, a lot of religious guys, but I had never met somebody that was like full of the Holy Spirit that just was on fire. I had never met anyone like him. And honestly, Tyler is who introduced me to that part of God, to that part of the of, of who God was. And there was something about him and his relationship with God that I did not have that I wanted. And so anyways, long story short, we fell in love. And uh, but I really fell in love with Jesus that was in Tyler. It was so different than my religion. It was really relationship. So I really just fell in love with, with Jesus and, and really just the relationship that Tyler had with him. It was so, it was so different than what I had. And so I moved to Baton Rouge and got involved at Healing Place. And I can just say that, you know, I can't really put a finger in my story on like the moment I gave my heart to Jesus. I felt like I did that a thousand times over the course of, you know, being raised in the church till probably I was 20. Mm -hmm. But I think the moment that I could really say I gave my life to Christ, I planned on being a marriage and family counselor. And so when I moved to Baton Rouge, I 
got my degree in sociology. I graduated college in three years, and my plan was to go straight to graduate school. And I really wanted that PhD on the wall, and I wanted to do counseling. That's that's what I wanted to do and be a doctor. Doctor, tell us. What's mm. up? And, uh, and I, I remember one night we were – Tyler and I were youth pastors at the time, but I was driving back and forth to New Orleans Baptist – um, seminary. And, um, one night we had a, a one way, what were those things called? One way service or I, I forget. Do you, yeah. I've, you I know, think it was one way. It was, it was the worship. Or, yeah. We were yeah. singing that song or something. And we were all down there with the youth. And I just had this really defining moment where I felt like the Holy spirit just stopped me in my tracks. We were down kind of like in the mosh pit, jumping around with all the junior high kids. And I feel like the Holy Spirit said, Crystal, you're done with school. I want you to give your life for the local church. And uh, the next day, I actually had to go to um, the registrar's office to re-enroll for a new semester. Or I had the choice to walk into Pastor Dino's office and to tell him that that was what I wanted to do with my life. And that was the choice that I made. I walked into Pastor Dino's office and said, hey, I'm here. This is where I want to be. This is who. You, this has my heart. And uh, I didn't go back to school and uh, I was about 30 hours in done. And so for me, that was like, that was the thing of, I fell in love with the local church. And I, for me, that's my defining moment of how I really gave Christ my life. Yeah. And I haven't looked back. No, that's, that's one of those things, you know, we talked about it in, in another episode. Um, when, when God wants to do something in our lives, most people aren't going to understand it. And, and sometimes we don't understand it. So there, right. there has to be sacrifice involved and there has to be faith, you know, involved and, mm -hmm. you know, to walk away from, uh, the, the near completion of, uh, a degree program, you know, looking back on, you know, my journey and everybody else's journey, that that's how it begins most of the time. So, right. Yeah, and my my story uh, of coming to Christ wasn't much much different from Crystal's. Uh, I was saved in September of 1989 at the ripe old age of six years old. Uh, I was baptized on October 1st, 1989, at First Baptist Church uh, in downtown Baton Rouge. And um, basically, my my testimony is one that says you don't have to have run from God to be used by God. Um, my my the the grace that God has given me. Uh, is the grace of, of protection rather than the grace of deliverance. Um, it's, it's both the same grace. It just is needed for different reasons. Yeah, uh, and I like God, that. God's grace just protected me from a lot of the foolishness that you hear in yeah. other testimonies. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. Uh, but the, the alternative to that is that um, growing up, you know, God was, was all around me, but um, come to find out God, wasn't necessarily like really in me, at least not fully, you know, sure. and, um, it, it took a, uh, and an encounter at a, a crosswalk summer camp, like Crystal said at Louisiana tech. And, um, uh, it took an encounter there, uh, with a lot of great, great men and, that, and friends that I'm still, still in relationship with today, but, uh, just to really understand that, uh, that God had more for me and that there was more to this life than just, um, paving the right way and, and having the right appearance and acting the right way and saying the right things and, and all of that sort of stuff. And, um, that was a radical, a radical moment for me where, um, I just kind of, just kind of turned it, turned it on. It was like a, literally like an ignition switch. And, um, and have like Crystal said, never looked back since then. And, um, I, I will also add to what she said, in that, in that her coming into, into my story in the way that she did, um, I, I am a hundred percent certain, and this is not just to sound, to sound, you know, lovey dovey or whatever, but I am without a doubt certain that, that, that even with a, you know, radical encounter, like I had at 18 years old, uh, my, my life would, would not look like it does today without her. Um, and the, the expression of my salvation probably wouldn't, wouldn't sound the same way as it does without her, her being in my life and being on, on my team. You know, I've, I've come to understand, you know, after working with marriages for 12 years and myself being married, we're going on 25 years this year. Wow. I, I'm starting, I'm starting to understand that, um, you know, uh, God intended marriage 
to to be a reflection of his of his glory. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, a lot of times you hear the chapter one, the Genesis chapter one story about how God created man in his own image. And but we kind of leave out Genesis two, where he creates Adam, he creates Eve. And at the end of that narrative, m- husband and wife are married. Mm-hmm. So he, he, he wants to create us in his, he creates man, but it wasn't good that man's alone. And then the man and woman are created. They are married. And I think that's really the completion of the, the narrative where God wants to, uh, create us for his glory and, and have us reflect his glory. So, you know, your testimony about how you guys, um, are, are better together and how, you know, you work so well together really lines up with that Genesis one and two, uh, story of, of God wanting to create us in his image. He creates man, he creates woman, you know, they're married, they're in covenant relationship together. So yeah, that's awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. So ultimately all that led up to where you guys are today. So why don't you guys tell us about, uh, you know, we're talking with couples uh, about how did you discover your hearts for missions? Um, so tell us about the, the specific call to Boston. How did that come about? How did you guys discover your hearts for Boston? Gosh, how do you want to, how do you want to start that story? Well, how long is this podcast supposed to be? Jerry? <laughs> no, we can make it short. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, we, yeah, man. I think we'll just tell the simple part of it. We we came to Boston. We You know, we were youth pastors at Healing Place. We loved it. It was like the best job ever. I there mean, we go. got paid to have pizza parties, to hug kids, to have awesome, fun Wednesday night services, organize retreats and, you know, lock-ins. And I mean, that was like, that's a dream job. Party it was, pastors. It was so fun. We had the <laughs> best time ever. And then just to see God just radically uh, move in students' lives who have such pure hearts. Honestly, it, we, it was the honor of our life. We had the best time. It wasn't ever a stepping stone for us oh, yeah, never. to like get to the the adult pastor role. That was never like we honestly, that when we started youth ministry, that was one thing I remember Tyler saying was, I don't want this to be a stepping stone because he felt like from the church culture that he had come from, that's what youth ministry was until someone could get that senior pastor role. They just kind of had to pay their due in student ministry. And so then they're overlooking what's in front of exactly. So we really, and you're not shepherding the the kids. Well, yeah, right. right. So we really just, really kind of had in our hearts that we would do student ministry until, until somebody thought we were too old and it was inappropriate anymore (laughs) to do it. Um, But, you know, we had a great time. And so anyways, one summer, um, we, it was right after we had Whitaker, he was about five months old. Tyler's mom is, was a math teacher or professor or something at LSU. We still not, we're still not really sure what her job is, but she's a math nerd. nerd. And she had a conference up here in Boston and she just invited all of us to come along for a family vacation. And we were like, sure. And so we stayed down in the seaport district about, uh, I don't know how far is that from our current, our second campus now. Like Uh, literally maybe like a five or minute walk, two blocks. Yeah, two blocks. And um, which is funny now because every time we drive past it, I'm like, only the Lord would have known that. And um, but we stayed and we just did the tourist stuff. We had a great time. And but but as we walked around doing all the tourist stuff, I don't mean for it to sound spooky, but maybe you know, uh, other people can relate to this. You just have a feeling, and there was just this feeling I had, this overwhelming feeling from. I believed it was the Holy Spirit saying that we needed to tune in to what God was doing in Boston. Mm. And it was something I just couldn't shake. Like I could just kind of feel it down in my bones that there was something God was doing really unique and that we were going to be a part of it and just didn't know what that was. Didn't know what that looked like. I don't even think church planning was what it was, but just Boston at that point really became, that was in 2007 and that became like it Boston just kind of became an obsession for us. I remember yeah. our friends were like like we could just talk about the Red Sox and it just Boston became an uh, became an obsession. I don't really remember because it's been so long ago now, but um and so then we uh I kind of forget the process, but yeah, a few we, years well, went we, by. Yeah, we we actually said on that trip if if there were ever a Oh, that's right. a healing place campus in Boston that we would volunteer to you know, to, to be, <laughs> to be on that team, you know, just, that's kind of one of those, 
one of those vows you make to God that you're pretty certain is never going to happen. So you're kind of safe, you know, but, but we said, God, if you ever, if you ever did something like that, we would, um, we would be a part of that. Here I am, love, Lord, send me. Yeah. We, we would love to be on that team. And, um, and you know, then I, I guess year, a couple of years go by, maybe, I don't know, year 12, 18 months, something yeah. like that. And, um, and honestly, we, we started to feel this dissatisfaction with what we were doing. Um, and again, not because it wasn't great or the best thing that the best thing that we could have imagined doing. It's because it we were yeah. a bit by the Boston bug. That's, yeah, I mean, was, that's the truth. It, like, it, it, it had was, had to be supernatural, yeah. you know. And so, um, and so, we just kind of started kind of leaning into that dissatisfaction and wanted to like just asking the Lord, like God, what is what is this about? What is that this for? Where is it coming from? And um, that's when the 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 church planting idea came about. And uh, so we started praying through that. And, you know, the, the first question you have to answer is, well, am I going, are we going to plant a church? Sure. Um, but then the second question is, where are you going to plant a church? And, um, and the, the only answer that we had right out of the gate for that question was, was not in the South. And uh, which in all honesty, probably would have been the answer that made the most sense because <laughs> because we're both southern you know like we we're we real southern. we understand that and you know that would have made a lot of sense but we just really felt in our hearts that God was saying not the south and um and so we said okay God where and uh Crystal's sister lived in in New York at the time so we kind of had had some connection to the northeast and um and that's when we just kind of kind of said well well what about what about boss? We did some research and just kind of said, what are some of the, at that time, the most, the least church region of America was New England, not mm-hmm. just the Northeast, but the New England states. Yeah. And, um, and so we were like, golly, Boston just happens to be in there. Right. Uh, let's do it. Yeah. I mean, you talk about unreached, mm-hmm. unreached people groups in the, the greater Boston area is somewhere between 97 and 98 percent non-churched and non-christian uh of, yeah you know 97 percent of of 4.8 million people in the greater boston area you know that's that's a big pond to fish out of and so we we looked at stats like that and then and like one of the growest fastest growing churches in america or not in america but in boston is the universalist church and, um, you know, the universalist people are amazing people. They do amazing work on the earth. Um, they're some of the nicest people you'll meet. But there's, you know, there's beginning to be a trend where we're further and further and further away from the gospel. That is the good news that we can't save ourselves, that we can never be good enough, but that we need a savior and that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to the earth to save us and that we have to repent, that we have to place our faith in Jesus. That message, which we believe is the greatest story ever told, that only true hope can be found in that relationship with Jesus Christ, not through our good works alone. Uh, that message is is really lacking here in New England. There's a great humanistic spirit. There's a great you know, Boston strong, good people, grit of the earth, which is what we love so much about Boston. So, you know, we like to kind of debunk the myth that, you know, the Southerners came up here to save all the heathen New Englanders. That was never the heart. The New England people are some of the most down to earth, loyal, genuine people you will ever meet. They will give you the shirt off their back. I mean, this is where there there's more nonprofits in New England than in most of the regions of the United States. They, I mean, they are doing some amazing work out of this place. Um, but we just felt like what was missing was a life-giving local church. A lot of the churches, I mean, you know, some of the best churches, uh, you know, the, some of the greatest moves of God happened out of New England, if you know, you know, church history. But what has happened is that we really felt like the church had kind of fallen asleep a little bit. And, you know, that wasn't just our opinion. That was really when we did our research, what we found out what was happening in New England. And so we were just to be, we were just happy to be a part of what God was doing, waking people up, waking the church up. And um, so that's, that's kind of what helped us zero in on Boston. Yeah, that, and and there was a lot of people here uh, that we had the opportunity to tell that story to, you know, and, and that's, that's kind of our bent on on things is uh, is a story, the power of a story. And uh, Crystal Crystal said it a moment ago, like that's that's really all we do as a church 
uh, is tell the greatest story ever told. And that's the, the good news of the gospel. And so, um, you know, when you, when you talk about a place that needs that, uh, that's, you know, a domestic mission field, um, this is literally the number one spot in America for it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, any basic history buff knows about, you know, the Puritans and, uh, all, all the, some of the first churches of new Americas happen right there in, in, in that region. Yeah. And, the great you know, awakenings. See, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, it's good to be a, a part of what God's doing over there, you know, for the last seven years through, through your guys ministry. Yeah, and so. We're so grateful for healing place and pastor Dino who, you know, uh, prayed through that decision with us because that was a big move. We were young. How old were we, Tyler? We 28. were we were twenty eight. You know, thinking about that with two young kids and come on, Boston ain't easy, and it's not been an easy field. Um, and you know, if you really don't have a call, church mm-hmm. planting. I don't care where you plant; it'll chew you up and spit you out. And so, um, we're just really grateful to have ha- have been sent by Healing to have sent with cover. Um, to have that relationship, that's been really crucial for us. You know, we, we didn't just, you know, come on up here, you know, guns a blazing, you know, all alone. <laughs> Nobody can do it on their own. Right. And you better be connected with health or because if you it's such hard soil, you know, for anybody out there that's thinking about church planning, that's really important that you wait on God's timing yeah. uh, to send you with cover and to send you with support. Because yeah. um, it, I don't care if you're planning in Birmingham or in Boston, or, you know, in any European country, wherever, you, you've got to make sure that you do it in God's yeah. way, and God's order, and His blessing will follow. Yeah. And um, that's kind of our story, which we won't go into today, but we really prayed and we really waited for God to make that really clear through our leadership. Yeah, and that, that covering is what helps, helps you to distinguish um, feeling called and actually being called uh, to a mission field, you know, and I think that's so important. To, to, to help have people in your corner that help you navigate through through what you're feeling to what you're actually hearing and um, and and we're we're very grateful to, to have had that and um, and, and even in, even in the times where we had to kind of just look at each other and say hey this is this is what we're doing this is where we're going and um, yeah because you know it. not everybody's gonna get behind what you're doing not everybody's gonna believe it I, I remember hearing you know, kind of banter through people kind of making fun of the name Story Heights and, you know, Boston and, you know, Boston's so hard and who do they think they are? Like, you know, you're going to get some of that. Um, But at the end of the day, the word no um, is really the greatest test of character and how you deal with the word no. And God is always working through that, even in the word no. And so some of those moments, even though they can be hard, for some of you who are wanting to step out into church planning or into the mission field, God is working on the behind the scenes there, even through the delay and even through the word no, those character building things. Because when we got to Boston after being sent and things got hard, <laughs> we can tell you some of those stories of how it's been hard. But when things got hard, we leaned back to those moments of no and delay and discouragement. And we said, we know that we're called. And that really helped us to keep that fan of flame in those early years and to keep going. Yeah. Your, you know, your story is, is, uh, so much like some, some of the other stories we've heard. And I loved how you said you were sent and how you, you, um, you, you are covered. Uh, I, I think sometimes we have to be careful about, we may believe our calling gives an excuse to step from under our covering. And, you know, Never. That's never in God's plan. That's not the heart of yeah. God. Um, you you want to be covered. Uh, you you wanna you wanna be you want you know be submitted. You want leadership. You want that coverage. It's so important. So it, it's so good to hear how you guys recognize that and you you allowed your leadership uh, to walk with you. I, I know for us when when. After we had talked with, you know, Brother Wayne, Pastor Mike and Brother Earl, who who were over Brandy and I, when they prayed and when they got a piece about it, that was such a comfort for us yeah. to know that the leadership that God put over us had a piece about it. And that really helped confirm our calling. So it's great to hear that you guys recognize that and and did it the right way, you know, in, in the orderly way. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. 
Yeah, so you talked about the mission field. You talked about how it could chew you up and spit you out. Uh, of course, one one of the, the big targets for the enemy is marriages. So let's take a, the next couple of moments and talk about uh, how has the mission field um, strengthened your marriage, uh, grown your marriage, uh, what, what maybe some over the last seven years that you've guys been through this and even a little bit before that, what, maybe there are some lessons learned or some takeaways that our listeners could glean from you guys in your experience in um, answering yeah. that call to Boston. Um, gosh, there's, there's, there's so many stories I'd say um, seven years, you know, on a, on a mission field. I think it, it reveals a lot of, a lot of character things uh, in both, both spouses. Um, and my gosh, I mean, this is a, a mission field where we speak the same language still as everybody. I, I, I I have a lot of a lot of respect for uh, for couples like like you and Brandy, Jared, that go to a place where you have to learn a foreign language and you know all that sort of stuff. But uh, it certainly <clears throat> it certainly pushes you to uh, to the extremes of things. You, you know it it pushes you to the extremes of your faith. Uh, it pushes you to the extremes of your prayer life. Uh, it pushes you uh, to the extremes of really every every arena, especially the arena of of your marriage relationship. Um, and it, it causes you to really evaluate some things and, um, really, really think through, gosh, I, I don't do that well, or I don't, I don't respond the right way under pressure. And, um, man, the, my patience level is, is not really at the place that it should be. Like it just reveals a lot of those things to you. Um, and, and so we've certainly had plenty of those stories and plenty of those moments, um, and plenty of those uh, passionate marriage conversations <laughs> Could, is that a, <laughs> discussion discussions passionate marriage discussions we'll call it um, robust discourse robust <laughs> yes that's a very yeah. Massachusetts uh, vernacular yes, right there huh? yeah we've had some robust discourse uh, <laughs> from passionate emotional feelings and that sort of thing um, and 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 what that de- what that did was it really it really uh, kind of showed showed not only weaknesses in both of us um, that we, we needed to work on, but it also showed strengths in both of us. And what I'd say we've realized the most over the past seven years, and Crystal, you, uh, I, I reserve the right to be wrong. You can 100% correct me. Um, but I, I really think we've realized that that our marriage is, is not just, um, it's not just like for us or for our family, but our marriage is, a part of our gift to the kingdom of God. Uh, Crystal and I have discovered that where she, where she is strong, those often are the points in, in my life where I'm weak, uh, and then vice versa, where I'm strong, those are some of her her weak spots. And so what we've what we've really been forced to do over the past oh my gosh the past fifteen years of just being in ministry together um, is we've been forced to to really learn to work together and not as Two strong, gifted individuals. I hope that doesn't sound arrogant. That's not my my intention. But as two people who are are you know whatever leaders or strong leaders, but uh, as two people who are, are better together and 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 partners in in life and partners in ministry, uh, we started very young in that capacity. And um, Jared, we were we were both twenty when we got married, and were youth pastors at twenty one. And had no idea what that was, and and I guess in just God's sovereignty, uh, He saw fit to put us in uh, ministry together as pastors. So we shared we shared a ministry, uh, we shared an office, we shared a desk, and we shared a laptop, and we shared a car. And if everything worked out like by the power of the Holy Spirit, we would still share a house sometimes. You know, like we just really were kind of thrown into the mix of it right out of the gate, and 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 what we. I guess what I I should say, I started um, seeing Crystal as my competitor and uh, she was strong and I was strong and who was stronger and who was going to be the leader and who would get the final say. And, um, and and that was just, that was wrong. And, you know, we had to, had to learn that early um, because what God gave me and Crystal was not my competitor, but my compliment. (laughs) Um, And I feel like, I might, you might say the same oh, thing about absolutely. me. Yeah. So, so we've learned that it's not about competition or competing with one another. It's about how we compliment 
And, and not just completion. Like, like I don't complete you because only Christ completes you. Like, I don't like the idea of like, you know. I said compliment. No, I know. Oh, I'm just okay. saying like, I think there's this idea where, you know, the the woman is the completion. You know, she she's the completion. And, and I don't think that's right. I think that becomes idolatry. I think Jesus is the only thing that can complete either of us. Our spouse can't complete us. However, we can complement one another and we can lead together and we can love together and we can work on the mission field together as, you know, teammates. And that's really how I see Tyler and I now as we was we worked through some of just those immature thinking. Yeah. But, you know, even it, even as we you know, before we before we really landed on church planning, um, you know, we we went on uh, uh, job interviews. Uh, you know, for d- associate pastor roles, that that was just kind of the process that our uh, our leadership put us through to really solidify the call to church plant. And I'll never forget this one this one uh, job interview that we went on. Do you want to tell the story? I was sitting in the back seat of the car of this interview, mm. and Tyler was in the front seat with the pastor. And our children were in and the our back and our children were in the back. It was bizarre. It was the most bizarre thing. Yeah. But what happened? Did he ask you where we wanted to eat or something? No, we were he we were picked up from the hotel and um, we got in the car and uh, the the guy who was driving us looked at me in the front seat and asked me where does my wife want to eat dinner? <laughs> and I remember thinking. I mean, she's sitting right there. Like, why, why don't you ask her? So I, I somewhat uncomfortably like leaned around in the chair and I said, Crystal, where where do you want to eat dinner? And and she was like, doesn't matter, you know, like, it, and, and I think that just kind of sh- shows the, 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 there's a mindset, I think, when it comes to ministry. And I think you could probably connect that to missions too, pretty easily is that, um, is that it's just, it's like one person one person's calling and then the other person's just being dragged along. Yeah. Um, and that's never, that's never how it's been for us. No. Uh, we got gotcha. that yeah. early. And I think that's a weakness if it's like that. Yeah. yeah. And, and so now it's, um, we do, we do everything together. We, we pastor together. Um, I'm the lead pastor and Crystal's the lead pastor. I love, I love what you said to, um, a, a, another interview. Every interview we went on made it very clear that we wanted to plant another, a, a church. But, uh, I, I love the other interview you went on. Uh, it was like a, I don't know, it was like a six or seven day interview that we went on and, intense, uh, man. it was, it was super intense. And, and Tyler, let's make this very clear. He was the one that was going to be paid. He was the one that was going to be hired. And the pastor actually pulled Tyler into a secret room without me knowing about it and told him, he said, man, tonight when you go before the board, you know, this is your time to shine. We don't want your wife shining. We want you to shine. And I love Tyler's response. What did you say? Because I think so many people need to hear this. Yeah, I said, I said, man, I, I understand, you know, what you're saying. I said, but but you got to understand that that if, if I if, if she's not with me or we don't shine together, then we're not shining nearly as brightly as you're going to need us to, because we we do we do this together. Right. You know? Yeah. If, even if she's not employed by your church she's still going to be very much involved in, in my employment. Um, because it's ministry together. It's we, we do this thing together and not separately because we're not competitors. I can kind of think that wraps all this up. We're not competitors. We complement one another. Gotcha. Uh, well, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's the appropriate response. I mean, <laughs> to, you know, you, 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 you know, you need unity, especially, pastors um you know i'm 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 more encouraged by the pastors who um really make clear the role of their wives in their ministry you know uh just like you guys are saying we do this together you know because you need you know I, i always found myself going back to that one simple passage in genesis where it says that god said it's not good for man to be alone mm hmm and he provided, uh, you know, a, a helpmate, you know, for him. And um, again, to, to reflect, you know, the image of God the way he wants us to, to have that, that wife, the husband and wife, uh, loving each other, respecting each other, serving each other, 
and that that's what fully reflects the image of God, and that's so needed, you know, as as shepherds and, and leaders. There's no doubt that you guys are being a good example, you know, to your church members and you know the leaders that you guys are shepherding. Uh, it's so needed nowadays with with you know the the the, the culture's idea of marriage. Now we need we need good biblical foundations of marriage. How you know, husband and wife in unity, love and serving one another and uh, being, you know, in in one to being unified. So it's yeah. good to see you guys walking in that. Yeah, I think that's that I, that mutual submission idea is 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 one of the the big draws that that people in, in our, our area have to our church, you know, is that um, it's not it's not Tyler. And then Crystal, it's it's us, you know, and and we we've just incorporated that into every area of our lives. We we do that for church. We do that with parenting. We do that in our her. businesses. You know, it's not like her business, my business, her job, my job. It's all it's all team Tullus, and uh, it's all you know for God's glory. I mean, that's the whole idea, and it uh, absolutely it works together. Yeah, Good I deal. often say I've kind of created ourselves because. When we don't like each other, there is no no way to go. There, there's no pouting. There's no not talking to each other for a few days because the church suffers, our real estate business suffers, our kids suffers. Yeah, so. You know, so it's a really when you're really one like that in every aspect of your life, and not that that has to be for everyone, but when you really make sure that you are, you know, really working together in life, then it, it really makes you stay. Uh, have your ego in check and make sure you're being, you know, slow to get angry and, and quick to say, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Good. That's good stuff. Hey, uh, this thought just crossed my mind. So in this series, Marriage and Missions, we're, we're primarily talking about missionaries, I guess the traditional sense of missionaries, but you guys are actually pastoring churches. So one of the things we talk about in this series is about how we want uh, couples to use the influence of their marriage to support the missions of their local church. As pastors, how do you guys get your congregation to engage in the missions of Story Heights Church? Hmm. Oh, well, uh, I don't know if you're thinking about this, Go but ahead. I know the answer. So I'll just, I'll just beat you to it. Jump right in. I think we've created, uh, well, we have a section of our service called Putting God First, and we've just created that We've created in our culture um, just the idea of putting God first. So we have a section in our service called Putting God First every single Sunday. Uh, because I think, you know, if you've never followed God before, you know, we're reaching a lot of first generation Christians. Um, and so if, if you've never done that, then you have all of you have your whole life out of whack. If God is not on top, then he's nowhere and he's got to be first. There can only be one priority. And so to answer your question, that's how it's, it's really teaching that idea of God has to be first and he, there can be none beside him. And so that's, it's, it's not just about getting people involved. It's about recreating that culture of is God first in your life with your time, with your talent, with your touch, with your treasure, with your thoughts. I mean, is he first in every part? And as we do that, as people respond to that idea they naturally get involved with outreach, with tithing, uh, with you know inviting their friends to church, with sharing the gospel with their coworkers, because they're starting to really understand, man, God actually is nowhere to be found in my life. And so to realign that, these are the steps that I take. Yeah, that's I, I love that idea because you know, like we talked about, not everybody's called you know to other countries, and uh, I, like I said, I just thought we had the unique. Uh, situation here where we're, we're talking with pastors of a church and the best way to get our congregation to engage. And I think what you guys are doing is you guys are challenging the condition of their heart mm -hmm. as far as where God is in their lives. And like you said, if, 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 if that revelation and that Holy Spirit conviction points to them, points to them, points them to some things that may be sitting on the throne besides Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, whenever they get that in order in their hearts, well, a natural fruit of that is going to be a desire for, you know, the mission of the, the local church as God is planning them in. So I love, yeah. I think that's a great uh, tactic. I think that's a great uh, way to go at it. That's, that's awesome. 
Well, and, and, you know, just really challenging the just humanism that seeped its way into the church today. You know, it's good to be all about social justice, but one of the things we really talk about a lot up here is God is more after spiritual justice. And it's not that he wants there to be poor people. It's not that he wants there to be injustice on the earth. But we know that those things have been around since the beginning of time. And what he's after is for our hearts to belong to him. Absolutely. And if we'd all give our hearts to him, then the social justice would be served. But spiritual justice has to be first and foremost. And so it's really kind of, you know, pushing those two thoughts, yeah. putting him first and spiritual justice. I love it. Um, you know, every episode we do in this series, Marriage and Missions, we always want to take time to just to challenge our listeners. And I really feel that this is that moment, uh, for this episode. Um, you know, we, we want to, there, there's no better foundation than that of Jesus Christ. So, you know, if you're joining us and if you're listening, we just want to, you know, have a little altar time in your heart right now. Is God first in your lives? You know, we were blessed to be part of Healing Place Church for the last 17 years, and they've always shepherded us well. They always uh, led us in, you know, in, in, in seeking God, putting God first, having that kingdom mindset. And, and it's one of those things where what, what have I learned in my walk with Christ that I wish I would have learned earlier? And now that we've wrapped up and talked about this topic about putting God first, uh, that, that, that's, that's, that's one of the things I wish somebody would have told and pressed upon me way earlier. So, you know, just like I said, a little, you know, a, a, let's ask God, let's ask the Holy Spirit to reveal, is he first? Because we don't want it. We don't want our listeners supporting missions uh, with the social justice uh, mindset. We don't want that to be the motivation. We want the motivation to see uh, God's kingdom grow. Uh, we want to see lost people saved. Uh, we want to see God glorified. We want to see uh, Jesus become more famous. Um, but that's not going to happen unless in personally you are putting God first. Out of that, we believe uh, the fruit of putting God first is going to be that God's going to reveal to you all your gifts, all your talents, and he'll let you know how to use that in your context and, and how to use that uh, for his glory, uh, for uh, the, the church that you've been planted in. So that, that I think that's our challenge for this episode. You know, what are some areas that you you, you haven't put? God first. Amen. And, and again, just allow the Holy Spirit to speak. You know, I, I love, you know, I believe that the Holy Spirit uh, tells us the truth in love. Uh, he's going to reveal some, some sinful things in our lives because he wants what's better for us. Um, so again, just ask the Holy Spirit, is God first? If not, what are those things? And his promises is this. If we confess our sins, he, he, he forgives them and he removes all unrighteousness from us. And, and he, he will show us those things. And we can confess them knowing that our, our Father God loves us and he wants what's best for us. And we'll be, we'll be, with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can start putting things right in right order in our hearts. And we believe fruit from that is going to be you know, God uh, realigning our priorities to, to make him famous, to grow his church. So that's our challenge. That's our challenge for this episode. Um, it's a great thought, man. I love that. That's that. I love it. That's awesome. Amen. Well, all righty. Uh, let me ask you guys this uh, as we wrap up here. Tell us how guys can follow uh, your journey um, how can they connect to you guys? How can they follow along with what your family and the Story Heights Church is doing up in Boston, Massachusetts? Yeah, so um, the, the world is, is a lot, I guess, pretty small these days. You can find us online a lot of places. Um, we are Story Heights Church is on Facebook. Uh, it's on Instagram. It's on all of those social media platforms. Crystal and I are both on um, social media. You can connect with us there. 
Our church website is storyheightschurch.com. Uh, we have podcasts uh, that you can find uh, on either of the platforms there. Just search Story Heights Church, and um, you can connect with us in, in all sorts of ways. The very best way, hands down, Crystal, would you agree? Hands down, wow. the best way to connect with us uh, is to plan a trip to Boston and come watch the Red Sox play and go on the Freedom Trail and eat some cannolis and do the whole deal. And just come say hi at church. Uh, we would love to see you. Great idea. We'd love to see you here. It's a fun place to be. Uh, summertime is a great time to be here. A great time to escape the heat of South Louisiana or Honduras. Jared, come on. I'm talking to you, bro. Like, it's beautiful here in the <laughs> south. And, uh, you I've can- never made it to the Northeast. You know, in all my years in the Navy and everything, I've been Florida, all over the South, the West Coast. Yeah, never yeah. made it up to the Boston area. Come on, man. They got a, they got a shipyard and everything. They'll welcome you welcome you in with open arms, bro. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, looking forward to it. Well, all righty. Thank you, guys. Hey, man, it was awesome. Like, again, loved hearing your story. I love hearing what God did through your guy through you guys, and 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 how you have used the influence of your marriage uh, to support the missions effort of, of Story Heights Church there in Boston. Thanks, guys. Loved having you guys on. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having us. All righty. That'll do it for this episode. As always, we encourage you to subscribe to the Healing Place Marriage and Family Podcast on iTunes or your podcast provider. Also, we ask that you would uh, rate and write a review of the podcast. When you write a review of the podcast, that gives us the opportunity to learn how to serve you better. All right. Again, our guests Tyler and Crystal Tullis, Story Heights Church in Boston, Massachusetts. That'll do it for this episode of the Healing Place Marriage and Family Podcast. Thank you for joining us for today's podcast. For more information about Healing Place Church, visit us at healingplacechurch.org. For more podcast episodes, subscribe to the Healing Place Marriage and Family Podcast on iTunes or the podcast server for your device.